The cargo capacity of the MISC Hull C on release exceeds anything else currently flyable in game by more than six and a half times. Between that and the hype around the launch of the Hull C, you'd be well forgiven for thinking that this must be a slam dunk, the strongest cargo hauler in the game. Well, hold those space horses because there's much more to it when you delve into the bowels of this ship. I'm Forrester, and in this video we'll delve into the in-game performance of the currently flyable MISC Hull C, which is described on the Star Citizen website as a heavy freight ship. If you've seen other reviews on this channel, then you'll have a good idea of what's to follow, with this video following the usual format. It's split into five sections, starting with a ship tour, assessing combat performance, reviewing handling and visibility, looking at the operating costs including profitability, before finally summarising. As always, I've included timestamps in the video description in case you want to skip ahead. And if you're one of the many people watching who isn't yet subscribed to the channel, you might consider it so you can be notified of future Star Citizen videos as they go live. We'll start the internal tour for the Hull Sea by entering from the docking port. This leads you to an area on the left or port side of the ship, which feels like an airlocked area. There's an elevator for when the Hull Sea is in landed configuration that would allow you to deploy to and from a planet or moon's surface and enter back into the Hull Sea. This room also contains various access to suit storage for the different crew members and a weapons rack. Entering through the airlocked door, we'll turn left and head to the front of the ship into the bridge. On the back of each wall is some component access, the main feature are three chairs, left for the pilot, right for the co-pilot and a central captain's chair. Moving back to the central corridor of the Hull C, there's some component storage located on the walls, toggleable by a button. But we'll head up the ladder to habitation. The main feature here is the living quarters. This is where you'll find the one of the four beds aboard, as well as a seating area and a food preparation area. Off to one side is a utility room, the first of which contains four storage bins for crew use. And the second of which contains a space bathroom. Don't worry, it has everything you need. Moving back out on this top deck at the front section of the ship, there's also the cargo operations room. This is a tiny room containing just a single chair with an engineer station. At the moment that engineer station doesn't do much, in the future it's expected that it will be used to control one of the four tractor beams on the spindles. That may be useful for loading or unloading your own cargo, doesn't currently work in game. On the right or starboard side there are some escape pods marked up for different members of the crew. Moving further back through the ship leads to the engineering section. This is via this strange telescoping room. If you really want to trip out aboard the whole sea, Go in here while the spindle is moving forward or back. So this takes us to the back of the ship. There's some very cool looking engines, an engineer station, as well as a lift and ladder to take you to one of the three different engineering decks. The first of those decks 
takes you to some component access. There's also a door with access to an escape pod. At the front of this section is just more doors with component access. And then moving up the ladder to the next deck. As you can see, sometimes proves challenging. This is some top tier ladder gameplay. When you get up to this top deck, you're at the top of the engineering section at the rear of the ship. There's an extra airlocked door, which is literally a door out to the side of the Miss Coal Sea. And another suit access storage location. Some video commenters might be tempted to highlight that the Hull Sea is not a combat ship. So why include this section talking about combat performance? Well, the Hull Sea still has weapons and may from time to time feel the need to defend itself, so to fully review the ship, it's important to consider how it performs in that regard. The pilot controls two size 3 Panther repeaters on a turret beneath the nose on the front of the ship. Effectively, that's a pair of gimbaled size 3 weapons, which does okay versus smaller targets, albeit at the cost of being very difficult to keep on target. There are two remote turrets accessed by the co-pilot, giving two more Panther repeaters each for a total of four size 3 weapons, all located on the top of the ship. That creates an obvious blind spot below, and the turrets are more suited to harassing attacking fighters than effectively destroying a player. Currently, the co-pilot only controls one of the turrets at a time, despite having access to both. Defensively, the Hull Sea carries two size 3 shield generators, which is fairly powerful defensively, comparable to a hammerhead for example. And there are no missile launchers aboard. Altogether, that means that the Hull Sea has a fairly pitiful combat performance, not so much because of the weapons equipped, but more because of how difficult they are to bring to bear effectively against attackers. The combat profile of the Hull Sea is much more tailored to absorbing some hits and escaping, rather than sticking around to defend itself. Visibility in the Hull Sea is as you might expect for a MISC ship, with the usual sliver of a viewport giving visibility out to the front and sides, but more limited above and below. To be honest, as the cockpit is at the front of the ship and because the Hull Sea is fairly slow anyway, the limited visibility isn't too much of an issue. That slow speed defaults to 66 meters per second, and even at that speed, handling feels heavy, especially planet side. The top speed out of atmosphere is 900 meters per second, but it takes a while to speed up and slow down to that. Realistically, pilots may find themselves bumping the speed up to 300 meters per second or so when navigating around the stations on cargo runs just because of the large open spaces involved. The Hull Sea is somewhat unusual amongst Star Citizen ships in that the length of the ship actually changes depending on whether or not the large spindle in the centre is deployed or not. With the spindle retracted, the Hull Sea is capable of flight and landing planet side, but with the spindle extended, that landing capability is lost, or at least lost for those who care for the integrity of their ship. The stock quantum drive is the Kama, which is not great, probably worth changing. The quantum fuel stores are fairly good, so the Hull Sea can support faster drives and still go the distance, certainly in Stanton and quite possibly whenever jump points are introduced. Costs to rearm, refuel and repair the Hull Sea are fairly reasonable, usually in the thousands of Alpha UEC following heavy usage. 
Far and away more expensive is filling the cargo bay with cargo through trading, which can cost millions of Alpha UEC to do. Cargo trading is the main gameplay loop at time of recording. The whole sea can technically do other stuff like simple combat contracts, box delivery and the like, but frankly it's too awkward to be worthwhile. The cargo capacity of this ship at 4608 SEU is absolutely gargantuan. It dwarfs the next in line C2 Hercules with a comparatively measly 696 SEU. So the potential to get goods from A to B with the whole C is unparalleled, but so are the limitations. To move cargo between locations needs the spindle extended, and that means that only places with docking ports are an option. That means largely space stations with the exception of Horizon, and the cargo loading and unloading mechanics also limit the whole sea predominantly to stations with a cargo deck, meaning the four space stations at the planets of Stanton. Then there's the timer to load and unload, five minutes of waiting at either end just to watch a timer go down. And that's when it works, it's very buggy so quite often with the prices of cargo there's potentially millions of Alpha UEC at risk. That said, when everything works as intended, the whole sea can make some reasonable profits through trading quite feasibly into the hundreds of thousands of Alpha UEC per hour. In terms of loadout changes, the big quality of life upgrade is the Quantum Drive, perhaps to a Pontes or similar, as speed in quantum travel will be a defining factor for your whole sea experience given the distances for travelling between stations. The rest is probably fine to leave as is. So the cargo capacity of the whole sea is absolutely unmatched in game. In extended form, realistically the whole sea is more suited to life in space, but that's okay as a balancing feature. But over and above the loading and unloading feature, it is physically possible to attach all sorts of cargo to the grid if you're willing to spend the time to do so yourself. As another positive, the headlights are fairly bright, which helps when navigating the dark stations. Whilst there are multi-crew positions available on the hull sea, with a captain chair and co-pilot chair giving access to the remote turret, the hull sea is mostly a solo ship. That's because those additional positions don't add much to gameplay for now, and even for those who might want to bring a gunner, they'd invariably be better putting the second player in a long-range escort fighter instead, to overcome the coverage challenges of the turrets. So, Whilst the whole sea is technically multi-crew capable, it's a much better experience for everyone to just fly it solo. That may change in the future as improvements to multi-crew gameplay arrive, including perhaps the tractor beams on the remote turret up top, but for now that's how it seems to be. Cargo trading is also a very, very risky business in the current patch, and you bear the risk of that. Every piece of cargo you load aboard, if you lose, stands to cost you a large amount of Alpha UEC. That might be through your fault, equally it could be due to a bug or frustration in trying to load or unload the ship. It took over 2 million Alpha UEC of lost cargo just to make this video. And unlike other cargo ships, all of your cargo is laid bare as a floating advert to would-be pirates or griefers. There's no hiding when you're hauling with the whole sea. In the future, there's the possibility of hauling contracts where the responsibility for the cost of hauling is borne by the contract giver rather than the haulier. But for now, that's not in-game, so you're limited to high-risk trades. And the long timers on loading or unloading goods are a big kick in the teeth here. Yes, it's more realistic, but it also makes smaller cargo haulers like the Hercules more efficient at making money, because they don't yet have the same limitations. It's also pretty boring gameplay to be honest, sitting watching a timer, knowing that you have to leave the second it's up to avoid your ship being impounded. Even the fact that you have to dock, perform your trade, then go back out to the cargo deck, then redock if you want to store your ship is all a bit of a pain. 
For long term trades it will be a much better option to have some sort of remote trading functionality so you can do it all over the comms channel without leaving your ship and saving you some valuable time. All of that is to say that the current implementation of it all feels a bit cumbersome and that does detract from the experience somewhat. All of that said, when everything works, when there are no bugs to stand in your way, the actual running of large scale cargo feels pretty cool. It's not the most involved gameplay loop unless you're doing complicated quantum travel doglegs to avoid potential pirates, but then cargo hauling was never supposed to be the most intense of loops. It's relaxing and feels like a pretty fun way to make some money for somebody wanting to take things a bit easier. So there's definitely some potential there. Which brings us to price. As a recently released ship, the Hull Sea is not yet available in game at time of recording so there's no credit price, but for out of game purchases the story is a bit of a weird one. People who originally bought into the Hull Sea concept paid $200 and for that price you might argue that such players are getting something interesting. $50 more than a freelancer max, but for over 38 times the storage capacity. It does only one thing, but it does that one thing on a scale that just casts everything else into insignificance. But the price is no longer $200, it's $500, and that's very expensive. It's more expensive than the Hercules, which in the current patch makes more profit hauling cargo. It's more expensive than the Hull D, at least at time of recording, which just makes no logical sense. For half a thousand dollars, the Hull C is very expensive. So the verdict has to be that it might be worth it for you, depending on how much you paid. But as of right now, whilst there's potential there for the Hull C, the gameplay hasn't fully caught up with that potential yet. But do you agree? I look forward to reading your thoughts on the MISC Hull C in the video comments. As always, if you're not yet subscribed you might consider it if you got this far to help give YouTube the nudge to suggest similar videos to you in the future. And it would also be really helpful to me if you would press that like or dislike button to guide me as to what videos you're enjoying the most so I can focus on making the most relevant videos in future. Otherwise, and as always, thank you for watching.